Biotechnology is a use of biological processes or organisms for the improvement of the characteristics of plants, animals, microorganisms, or food derived thereof. Biotechnology has shown positive benefits to countries that adopted it more so in increasing yields, thus increasing food production. This is why these experts are recommending the practice of modern biotechnology and food production as the world continues to battle the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, especially Nigeria. Uh, you know, we want to be the center of uh, technology. Yes. Uh, oh yes, exactly. not only okay. Africa first the and then the world. The world. Yeah. Our, our ambition should not be you know, so, limited. Yeah. So if you are going to be the center or you're going to be a hub, it means that many of these things, you, yeah, you produce them. And that's how we can give jobs to our people. You see, the good thing with technology is that uh, if you have this technology, you can transfer it uh, you know, to other areas. This is that we has already been tested by the farmers and they all love it. They all, they all want it. And that's why we think we should do everything to encourage them to have access to it. And this, this, also, this also is also important because once you they uptake it fully and see the massive difference between what they were doing and what this is giving, that will also encourage many more to now adopt the, the, the technology. They believe that the best way to survive the current looming food crisis is through the practice of modern biotechnology in the agriculture sector. The new uh, varieties of BT cotton, two of them, give between 4.2 to 4.5 tons per hectare. Uh, and uh, this is very massive when you compare it to what you get using the traditional uh, variety, which gives between two, 250 to 750 kilograms per hectare. That is less than one ton per hectare, but this gives you 4.2, 4.5 tons per hectare. Yes, in the, in the case of, uh, of uh, cowpea, cowpea is another major, major strategic uh, success, uh, which was developed, uh, in, uh, of course, in close partnership with IAR. Institute of Agric Research in, uh, in Zaria. Uh, this t technology again in that sector is also we expect will be another uh, game changer because you know cowpea has a peculiar a peculiar problem. Uh, there is a pest maruka. These uh, tiny caterpillars that are so voracious and so devastating. In fact, it's, uh, it's almost it's a nightmare to uh, cowpea farmers because you can virtually devastate a 10-hectare farm in 10 days once you allow it into your So, uh, I mean, farmers, are, it's a terrible thing if it happens to, if it comes into a cowpea farm. And all efforts to control this using uh, normal chemicals and so on never uh, worked. They quickly developed resistance and so on. That was why, at the end, we had to resort to this uh, uh, BT uh, cowpea, transgenic cowpea which has been able to resolve uh, the, the issue. Because uh, whatever we're doing, we're actually doing it um, to improve crop productivity in Nigeria, to enhance food security. And of course, but we have to, at the same time, ensure that what we're doing or what we're developing is very safe, safe for consumption, safe to humans, safe to animals, and then safe to the environment. GMOs are very safe. Despite all the propaganda, anti-propaganda that the anti-GM group has been putting into people's brain. So, and also, I am in agriculture. You don't know food. Health starts with food. So this is what I am here. Health always starts with food. Anybody who goes hungry a whole day will know that health will start with food. The United Nations had projected that Nigerian's population would double by the year 2050. With the rapid population growth, increasing food production and ensuring food security, therefore, has become very important. To fast-track food security and feed the growing population in Nigeria, National Biotechnology Development Agency, NAVDA, is targeting to produce about 5 million yam seedlings for Nigerian farmers using aeroponics technology. You know that our farmers will get back to farm so that we will have food security because we, we with this large population, we must be able to feed our people. And you know, yam is a, a very important uh, food uh, for Nigerians, and uh, I think as of today, we are still number one uh, you know, producers of yam in the whole world, and we want to retain it. Yes. But the bottleneck has always been uh, seedlings. So now, NABDA 
we'll be producing 5 million, 5 million seedlings that are high yielding. They are also disease resistant. Uh -huh. So this will be a major contribution in that effort. And uh, we commend them and we believe very strongly that this will help our economy to uh, recover from the shock. We can, we can produce hundreds of thousands of yam seedlings within a very uh, short time. Uh, we, we grow, you know, it's uh, aeroponics, it's soilless agriculture. We don't require soil to grow them. And once they start growing, that's what we call the babbing te te technology. The yam stems are cut at specific points where there are nodes and so on, and uh, re, uh, um, replanted within that environment where there is total control of both temperature and pressure. And therefore, that is why we can get them to uh, do very, very well. The genetic engineering technology is one of the most powerful tools of the 21st century that can revolutionize the world system and solve basic problems and such as hunger, malnutrition, climate change, and the more recent coronavirus disease, among several others. It is particularly important in the case of uh, farmers because, you know, farm produce is moved all over the country, both animals and, and um, tomatoes and uh, oranges and so on moved across the, the country. And we need to test these people who are involved in these uh, um, movements. Even farm hands, uh, farm hands are also uh, important because if you go uh, farms where you produce uh, things like lettuce, oranges, mangoes, uh, you know, t tomatoes, these things people just eat most of the time without cooking. Uh, it's important that we test the handlers regularly so that uh, quickly isolate those who have become infected and uh, treat them so that they do not infect and then uh, transmit the disease to and uh, we believe that once we're able to domesticate that technology, yes. uh, we will also transfer that technology to the production of vaccines for so many, so many uh, diseases. Apart from vaccines, manufacture uh, development of vaccines, of course there are other things that um, uh, it can help because eliminate, you know, these uh, diseases like cancer, you know, terminal diseases. You know, when you hear someone has cancer, it's like, life has ended with him. I mean, the, the, the person will not survive anymore or what. Cancer, we have um, um, sickle cell as well. You know, you can use gene editing to actually eliminate diseases like cancer, you know, diseases like sickle cell. Sickle cell is a lifetime, it's genetic, but you can use it to knock out those genes that are making you to have cancer. And I tell you, your offsprings from generation, they will not have it. Because that gene that is making you, you know, to be prone to cancer or to have cancer or other diseases like uh, diabetes and what will not be there again. Gene manipulation, you can suppress it. You don't even need to bring gene from somewhere and put it. With gene editing, you're just editing, like carrying out um, operation. Someone is sick. Maybe there's something in him. You open up and then remove it. So it's like the same thing can be done with the genes, you know. You open up and then check the genome of a human being or someone who is sick who has cancer and what. And then look out for that gene that is responsible for that ailment. You silence it, you can use enzyme to silence it, you know, or you remove it or whatever, edit it out. So it's very useful, it's a very useful, um, it gives life back to those who have no hope, it gives hope back to them. The development and application of biotechnology in plants and animals offers novel possibilities that could facilitate the nutritional enhancement of staple crops in developing countries that could boost immune system resistance against any form of disease. Ngozi Onyejako, AIT News, Abuja.